Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. There have you the first of many battle group overviews, this one being the second guard's tank core. My plan is to go through all of the battle groups in order alternating between Axis and Allies, uh, starting with this division here. If you want to see gameplay with these divisions, make sure to check out the gameplay videos that will accompany these, as well as my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash VulcanHDGaming. On the weekends, 8pm BST, Saturday and Sunday, I do stream Still Division 2, and you can come along, join in the games, or just watch if you prefer. So make sure to go do that, it's a lot of fun. Anyway, let's get started. This is the Second Guard's Tank Corps. It's an armoured focused division. Uh, as you can see by the amount of cards we can get in the tank tab. We've got uh, plenty of T-3485s and the whole way that I've built the division is balanced. So we've got the balanced deployment type and the idea is to have a relative strength in A, B and C. There's no standout moment in this particular battle group apart from in B, but we'll get to that in a bit. Let's start off in the recon tab. So my choices here are the T-34-76 Rosvedka and the Rosvedka squads. So we bring in the T-34-76 Rosvedkas uh, mainly because they are great for accompanying your other tanks in the early game. So when you're pushing quite aggressively with your initial 750 points, these are good for accompanying your tanks because tanks have naturally low optics. So for example, the T-34-76 Rosvedka here has high optics but tanks, they have very low optics, which means they can drive pretty much right up next to an infantry squad and they still won't see it, especially if they're in cover. So that's where the recon tanks can come in handy because it will allow you to spot those infantry squads and then subsequently destroy them, especially with units like the T-3476 Rosvedka that comes with two machine guns. And any tank with two machine guns is great for dealing with infantry because they pin them down very quickly. So therefore you can just run them over um, and surrender them. That's the theory anyway. The Resvetica squads in B, these are great because they have a bazooka and they have the very good stealth. So they are very hard to see and can therefore ambush enemy tanks very easily. You might have to be a little bit careful with the engagement range. They can engage at 500 meter range. So you might want to put them on return fire or something so they don't necessarily reveal themselves. But the bazooka is really useful and a great ambushing recon squad. And recon in general, especially recon infantry, is used for spotting vehicles at long range. It's not actually very good at spotting stuff at short range, especially units in heavy cover at the moment. So bear that in mind using infantry and that's why I've chosen the choices in the recon tab. Moving on to the infantry tab. We're starting off with the choice of the GV Comroti. Uh, I love these squads because they have the smoke grenades and they also have consistent weapons. So sometimes you get a leader unit that has like two submachine guns and a rifle and that rifle will make them reveal themselves at range unless you micro the return fire. Whereas these, you know, they're more consistent. They have 500 meter range. They do, of course, reveal themselves at range, but you've got your smoke to cover them off and that smoke can also be useful if you've got them deployed near things like AT guns or support weapons or even your tanks and your tank comes under fire it maybe takes a crit like a transmission damage or something and it's like half panicked throw a smoke grenade on it and then it can get out of there safely that's what the great thing about these squads with smoke grenades have they've got a lot of utility accompanying those in phase a we've got Gavardia with the DP the extra DP machine gun, and then Tanko Desaniki, uh, which come in the M2A1 half track with the 50 cal. So, Gavardia, useful long range infantry, use the machine guns to engage squads at a distance with the 8 mods in Nagants, and then you've also got a PTRD for engaging armor at 500 meter range. At close range, these are actually pretty good at destroying things up to like Panzer IVs. You can probably take out a Panzer IV quite well with um, a PTRD. Otherwise, you're just going to be critting stuff. Um, and crits can lead to kills, but less likely. Uh, Tanker Desaniki, great close range infantry squad. And this half track is a nightmare to deal with in the early game. Uh, there aren't, like, the thing is with the half track is it's very difficult to kill. So, with like a standard transport, like the uh, Stubbecker here, which you can get with the Sepali, for example, um, the Tanker Desaniki, bringing them in a half track, this thing will often get crit before it gets killed. 
which means you won't lose a unit unnecessarily if it comes under fire. You'll have time to unload it. So that's the great thing about half tracks, uh, especially like these M2 half tracks, which are unmanned. Uh, they'll unload after this gets crit. Whereas the M2A1, it will stick around and provide the 50 cal fire, which is really useful for running down infantry that doesn't have an AT weapon. So that's what I'd be using them for in this case. So you've got a half track that can run down infantry that doesn't have AT. You've got close range infantry for dealing with other infantry in like forests. And then you've got Gavardia for dealing with units for like mid and long range, uh, supported by the obviously the command there. Moving into B, got more Cavardia, but these aren't the ones with the extra DP. They've just got one DP and they have a short range anti-tank grenade. You can ambush tanks with the anti-tank grenade if you have them in like heavy cover and then like run them out and just attack. Um, they're great at catching out tanks in like light cover that's in between heavy cover. Good use for the, those sort of AT grenades. Otherwise, it's just a, a line infantry unit that's good for keeping your enemies at a distance, but also used by throwing at the enemy so that they reveal the positions of the enemy when they engage with their machine guns. Then you have the Sapelli, a standard close range infantry squad. Seven SVT is really nice for medium range engagements as well. And then their close range engagements, they've got the HE, uh, which obviously blows up the enemy infantry squads, generally pins them down in one grenade and then you surrender them. Or um, if it's like a one-on-one, -on -one, then you might trade. Um, if you've got another infantry squad, like a pioneer squad on the enemy, enemy side, you might trade with the, with the HE grenades. There are ways to dodge the HE grenades if you kind of pull them back just as the grenade lands. Um, but you'll always take a little bit of damage, but you can kind of negate some of it if you're quick on the micro. Um, but yeah, these are just your standard close range infantry squads. You can engage at medium range, especially in light forests with these. They do do quite well. Then I've got some more Cavadio in phase C. Again, just for throwing at the enemy to reveal their locations by letting machine guns fire on them. That's what they're there for. Uh, most of your damage will come down to your tanks as well as your supporting units, uh, artillery, that kind of thing. There are some other decent choices in here like Avtos. Uh, the Avtomat, Kiki, these guys are pretty nice, close range infantry support. Uh, however, I do prefer to have infantry that can engage at the longer ranges and reveals enemy infantry at longer ranges. Uh, so that's where the Gavardia can come in really handy. Uh, and the Sapelli are kind of more efficient than the Avtos whilst they still have grenades, the like the HE satchel. Uh, Avtos, they're good over time, but um, they're, the trouble with these compared to Sapelli is they're not very versatile. Um, so this gives you a bit more versatility the way they've got it set up. The other thing to mention at the moment is these Sapelli have been changed. The Sapelli with the PPSH. Their four-man squads now, 10 points apiece. You can get nine of them in phase A um, in trucks. Worthy choice for sure. Maybe think about bringing those in the early game to kind of lock down the positions that are contested early on. Moving on to the tank tab, I've got my T-34-76 Comrati. Uh, this is just a command tank to accompany the other tanks that I have. You have to bring it in a one-star veterancy, which gives you two. And... Yeah, it's, it's a decent tank. It's got the two machine guns and it's got your standard 100 millimeters of penetration, 75 millimeters of frontal armor. Um, you might want to keep it out of the way of Panzer IVs or, or any other medium tank really, but can be used well to deal with light units. Um, but generally you don't want to engage it against medium or heavy targets because you want to keep it alive for the command radius. If you want to throw stuff at medium tanks, then take the T-34-76 1943s. These are probably one of the most cost efficient tanks in the game right now. Um, really cheap and cheerful. They've got 100 millimeters of penetration, great for destroying most medium tanks, like Panzer IVs mostly. And then you've got the two machine guns for pinning down infantry very quickly alongside the HE shells on the main gun. So. Really, really nice tank uh, for rushing people and getting up close and personal. And then to accompany those in phase A, I've got the T-3485 1943s as well. Now, T-3485 1943s, I find much better sometimes and much more value out, out of those than the 1944 variants because you don't have to micro off the APCR. So if I forget for whatever reason, I don't get punished for it. And the AP shells are more than good enough to kill something like a Tiger at close range. And they've got 145 millimeters of penetration. That will 
yeah, be more than enough to get through a Tiger at close range, like I mentioned. About the 500 meter range sweet spot is where they're really good. And I mean, at, at close range, they, I think they pretty much have like 100% penetration chance, like when they're right next to a Tiger. So, but yeah, at 500 meters, I think it caps out at 100% and then like anything closer obviously maintains that 100% chance. So... Yeah, 1943 variant of the T3485 in Phase A. You can get three of them at one star veterancy. You get four with no star. So I th think I prefer to add the extra veterancy. It really definitely helps the T3485 because the T3485s naturally have higher accuracy. So you can see the difference is like 6% accuracy on the main gun. And if you have a command vehicle near this with a commander buff, um, then you can make these three star at the start of the game and that can be incredibly strong because the accuracy then goes well over 60 percent so really really nice so that's my phase a sorted anyway in phase b we've got the t34 76 1943s again i brought these in at one star veterancy again to give us three star veteran uh, tanks and the availability of like 16 compared to 12 with extra veterancy i think having the extra veterancy is worth it again so that you can push them to three star quite easily and i've got some t3485 conrotis to provide uh, more command into phase b alongside more 1943 variants then into phase c i've got the 1943 variants with the one star veterancy again and then i've got 85 or 1944 variants sorry with the apcr shells for if anything's getting too hard to deal with, things like Panthers and so on, especially if you're up against like 5th Panzer or Gripper Hartnick or something like that, having that extra APCR can be helpful, but generally I find myself just turning it off all the time, which is why I do rely a lot on the 1943s and playing up close and personal, like getting really close to the enemy tanks and then win trying to win that way. One thing that you may find bites you though, is that generally Tigers, especially Panther A's, I think Panther A's have 30 degrees per second traverse speed on their turrets. So make sure you're always 2v1ing enemy Panthers, Tigers, and so on. Uh, you should have the economy to do it, uh, especially with a balanced deployment type. And you've got to remember that T3485s, they cost 85 points or 90 points if you're taking the 1944 variant. And the enemy panther like a panther a which will out aim your t3485 um they cost 130 so you can get away with trying a 2v1 yes you're paying a 170 points to kill you know the enemy's 130 points but it's definitely worth it and if you trade one for one because of taking two versus one then technically you're getting you know value for money and that's how you play with the t34s in my opinion like get close find those trades like the one for one trades and it will the if you're one for one trading with the axis side you're always getting value that's the main thing to to think about when playing with these divisions play for that close range move your tanks in and through positions that keeps them in cover until you need them to fire that is the way to play it and that's pretty much all the options you can get there's no other different tanks that you can choose from except from the 1942 variants on the t-34s which have extra armor but i find just having that extra cheap tank like the extra five points for this tank is not really worth it when you need the numbers because you do sacrifice i believe availability as well with the 1942 variant so i like having the availability and the cheaper cost so that we can have those as close range support tanks versus infantry more and then you use the 85s to deal with armor that's the way it's built up so there you go that's uh, sort of my detailed look into the tank tab of the second guard tank corps which is probably the main part of this particular division moving into the support tab we got a few interesting units here we got the ob 25 76.2 uh, millimeter uh, this is a really nice infantry gun but also comes with five heat shells with 90 millimeters of penetration. Now, the great thing about heat shells is their penetration does not drop off at range. So they will have a flat penetration value against any target. And if their penetration value is higher than 
the armor they're up against, then they'll have like a flat penetration chance, no matter how close that unit gets, which can make these very effective at long range. Um, and if you give them extra veterancy through a commander and a leader, then you can find a lot of value out of these. They only cost 40 points apiece. They have been nerfed recently. You used to be able to get them at one star veterancy and six of them. And I think they used to cost like 35 points instead of 40. So you can see that the in the game they have been very strong and therefore they needed to be nerfed. They're still relatively strong and still a, a contested pick. Like they, they're still like something that people will consider buying and bringing in and I think it's especially the case in the second guards where you can benefit from having the HE against infantry to accompany your tanks so there we go that's the OB25 and we got those in phase A with no veterancy uh, then I've got a commander in phase A I've also got a commander in phase B the M2 combat I've got supply in B and C to accompany my artillery. I could probably consider bringing supply in phase A to accompany my mortars, but I think I br decided to bring in the extra supply in the late game because of Katyushas. Katyushas, they, I think, can get like one or two, well, two volleys from a from one supply truck, but the second volley only has 15 rockets. It's really, really triggering, but either way, um, because I'm using Katyushas, it's important to have enough supply to keep resupplying them throughout the game. And I generally bring them in at the beginning of Phase B. And that's a little bit of the Phase B power I was talking about. I've also got a card of the ISU-152s in Phase B. They come in with this groovy camo, if you've got the Digital Deluxe Edition, I think. Um, but yeah, a decent unit for engaging infantry at long range. Absolutely smashes infantry in the open with its uh, HE shells and can also really put a dent into Axis armor with AP shells. But uh, do be careful, the 125 millimeters of front armor is deceiving. Most Axis armor, especially Tigers and Panthers, can penetrate that quite easily. Same with APCR shells from Pack 40s and also Pack 43s, of course. Um, so bear that in mind. Uh, these can actually get killed easier than you can imagine. So make sure they're engaging the right targets and not being engaged by the wrong targets. Like make sure you're keeping an eye on these if you're using them. Um, there is the option to bring in two man flamer squads, which is definitely a choice uh, that you could make. If you want to contest the early game objectives, then these accompanying the Sepadi and the infantry tab with the PPSH is a great combination because they can both come in jeeps. They both get to the front line and contest those points very quickly. So in a 1v1, um, that would be much more important. This is more of like a 3v3, 4v4 deck, so bear that in mind. Uh, machine guns aren't that great at the moment, especially on the um, allied side, so I wouldn't bother bringing those in. And there is plenty of ISU-152s available in this division, but unfortunately no space for them in my opinion if you want to bring in your commanders, your supply, and all the other stuff, right? Um, they just don't really afford... Uh, two activation points. Uh, moving on to the anti-tank tab, uh, we have Panzerschrecks. Panzerschrecks are great, especially uh, again for accompanying the flamethrower squads and the Sepadi with the BPSH in the early game. They do have the Jeeps, but I tend to use them in a more sort of loose way, where I put them in places where they're a bit more abstract. Rather than putting them like on roads, I put them like just off to the side of the roads and like in, in light forest areas that are sometimes used to flank so they can, but they basically protect my flanks. That's what I would use them for. Um, and then I have my main tanks like pushing through wherever I want them to. Um, so these panzer tracks sort of pick up the slack elsewhere. And so they're great for just ambushing. Um, the only trouble with doing that is um, you do find that infantry will randomly find them sometimes, but they're cheap and um, therefore it's not a massive loss if you lose them. I've got the 45mm AT guns in phase A. Um, these are coming in with the WC-52. Great for spreading around in the early game. Pretty cheap for what they offer. 35 points, kill one tank with these and they pay themselves off. That's the beauty of these AT guns. Uh, then I've got some ziz 2s in phase A as well. This is for if I'm struggling to break down uh, tigers or panthers early especially against something like the fifth panzer these are sometimes very necessary in order to help you find side shots and criticals that allow you to overrun those tanks so 
That's why I'm bringing in Sister 2s in phase A, and I've got more in phase B. Got six more in B with no veteran C. You can't bring them in C with extra availabilities, so yeah, that's kind of where you're capped out. Other choices here, this three, I wouldn't really consider it as a choice. Uh, its APCR shells are very lackluster, 135 millimeters of penetration, only one damage. And then the standard AP shells, they get the five damage, but only 105 millimeters of penetration. So great for like medium range engagements, but if they reveal themselves at long range, these things are just going to die. And then like their indirect fire with the HE shells just isn't that great. So yeah, lackluster. And same with the SU-85. Biggest problem with the SU-85 right now is its lack of rate of fire. Five rounds per minute rate of fire is uh, pretty bad uh, considering the other stats that it has. It only has 70 millimeters of frontal armor. Like, like that five round per minute rate of fire is fine on a T-34-85 because it's got some decent armor. But like on an SU-85 it will fire most likely miss its first shot even though it's got a decent accuracy and then it will get killed by a tiger <laughs> that's generally how i find these these die so yeah i've avoided them in the second guards tank core then we have the anti-air anti tab uh, this is pretty simple tab for most soviet divisions but i think the 37 mils are generally the best bet uh, the Dushka, Maxim 4M, and M17 are all pretty lackluster at the moment. They don't really put enough firepower into the sky. Um, the M17s can work if you have enough of them and high enough veterancy, but the 37 mils are way more consistent. So that's why I like to bring them. They're effective with no veterancy, and you can get a lot of them. So in this case, I've got two in phase A with the Dushka truck, as a transport make sure you do this. this is pretty important and then i've also got the ones in phase c because you're playing 10 points for an extra aa vehicle which is not really an aa vehicle it's more like just fire position versus or fire support versus ground forces uh, because of the limited range but it's still nice to have that extra vehicle there as a threat um that they're going to have to deal with so there we go 37 mils definitely much more consistent got eight of them in phase c as well so 10 in total which is more than enough to get you through the game uh, then in the artillery tab this is a real big mix that you have a like a choice to bring in uh, but i'm just going for the 120 mil mortars in phase a you get three of them and uh, then in b i've got su 76 ms and cartouches so in the early game the 120 mil mortars used for smoke for covering your advances and also for just pinning important targets like AT guns. So if your a your opponent has brought in a lot of AT guns at the beginning of the game and you're bringing in a lot of tanks, you're going to want to pin those down quickly. That's where the 120mm mortars come in handy. Uh, they do suffer from lack of accuracy at long range, so you might have to have them closer to the front line than you'd think um, in order to get those shots off. But still, yeah, decent. And when they hit the mark, they do a lot of damage. SG-76Ms. These are great for harassing tigers and panthers in the mid game. Um, if you move them within the 2000 meter range, but don't have them have direct line of sight against those tigers and panthers, you can just right click order onto the tiger. They will indirect fire at the tiger, but be like deadly accurate. So they'll basically use their own corrected shot for themselves whilst tracking their target. And that is so useful because over time you will eventually kill that tiger and, and panther or whatever it is with direct shots. Um, the HE value will add up and you can kill tanks with HE. Um, so that's a great way to use SU-76s. They are pretty expensive for what they offer right now, but worth having for sure for that harassment in the mid game. Uh, definitely sort of accompanies the T-34-85-1943s 1943 is very well. I've also got the Katyushas in Phase B, and I was talking about a power point uh, towards the beginning of the game, like a, a, a point in the game where you can really push hard. And I think it's more like at the end of Phase A into Phase B, if you bring in two Katyushas and they're stacking armor anywhere, you use the Katyushas not to kill the armor, but to pin the armor down or make them fall back. And that way you can drive your fast T-34s forwards and really exploit uh, those areas so this really works in a 1v1 um, because generally you won't you'll have like flanks you can play off but in 4v4 and 3v3 it works as well 
you just get the cartouches onto those important targets that you need to pin, like a Tiger Panther, AT guns, whatever, and then you charge them with the T-34s, right, whilst they're pinned down to find the kills. So the these guys pin them down and then the tanks finish them off. And that's the great play that you can make at the start of phase B. Just make sure that you move your Katyushas after firing them because they are going to attract counter battery very quickly. So that's an important thing to remind you guys of. Um, in this tab, you can get artillerists and Visivod. Um, Visivod are always better at the moment than um, artillerists. Um, you can get the same availability and they both provide radios, except from the VZVOD provide a better buff, which is, you know, command radius. Um, so VZVOD always over artillerists at the moment. I think artillerists would be better if they changed the optics to very high to match recon infantry. Uh, that would make more sense, I think. And then you'd probably maybe consider bringing these if you didn't need extra command in your division. But I think in most cases you'd welcome extra like leaders in command. So busy VOD at the moment is the priority. Um, you can get some F-22s, decent um, direct fire support guns, but really don't deserve any activation points in this division. Uh, then you've got a range of mortars that you can choose from if you don't want to use the 120 mils and prefer using 82 mils because they aim a bit faster and so on. Um, then there's the off map, the 152 mil. It's pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> at the moment so I would just kind of stay away from it. it it can be used well if you maybe bring it in phase C for example and then put it on like emergency so that it like spreads its shots around and kind of just loosely uh, loosely affects morale of all of the units in a particular area but it wouldn't be worth the price for the effectiveness I don't think Anyway, moving into the air tab, we have the Yak-1B Normandy in Phase A. You can get three of these at two-star veteran C, so really, really nice. They've got 75% accuracy on their main gun, on both of their guns there. They're decently fast, um, really, really useful aircraft to have around um, in the early game. And then there's also the Yak-9T Normandy, um, which I bring in Phase B. These have the cannon in the nose, the 37mm. Um, so pretty damn effective again, and uh, yeah, just a standard fighter for dealing with enemy fighters and also attack aircraft. And then in phase C, I've got some bombers, and these are more just a use for points if you have extra points to spend. So I wouldn't buy these at any point in the game unless I had spare points to spend. If I was floating a lot of points, for example, and I didn't really have anything else to spend it on, uh, bombers is always a, a decent way to go, unless, of course, your opponent has a lot of AA. But the great thing that, about these is they're, they're more or less like little carpet bombers, and they will pin down, I think, tigers in one run, and other heavy armor, and, and they will kill, um, a, I think, um, AT guns in one run. They can be used for that kind of thing in, in the late game. But in the mid game, you're using your Katyushas in these, these in the late game, if you aren't up against much AA. And considering you're probably not going to be using much air force before um, the late game, um, you can often get away with this in 1v1, 2v2, maybe not so much in 3v3, 4v4, where AA is quite common. Um, and that's about it. I mean, the IL-2s with the HE rockets, I'm not a massive fan of. And uh, the HE bombs there. I mean, these HE bombs, 25 kilogram bombs, might pin down an infantry unit, but <laughs> not much else. The IL-2 with rockets... They can pin stuff down, not too much lethality though. Definitely prefer the uh, rocket planes with AP rockets. Um, so yeah, I tend generally stay away from the IL-2M in this battle group. In terms of defenses, you're probably not going to be using them too often. Um, if you're playing this in battle group, it would be on attack or on um, uh, breakthrough. You'd be playing the battle group on attack as opposed to defense most of the time because of your lack of bunkers. But you can take a similar defense to me if you wanted to. Um, just a, a note, um, if you do want to play this specific battle group, I do have links, a, a, a link in the description to all of my decks and all of my deck codes. So if you just want to copy that into the game, then feel free. But yeah, going over the, the deck as a whole, uh, we've got uh, some recon to accompany us in the early game, the T-34-76s, uh, Razvedka, 
is there to accompany the T-34 1943s, mainly in the early game, the uh, T-34-76s, uh, for aggressive, fast pushes. Because the T-34-76s, they have 40 km per hour off-road speed, which is very, very quick. So you can have a leader unit, a standard unit, and a recon unit all together, and they can work in tandem to push through an area. The T-34-85s will be a little bit far behind because of the 30 km per hour speed. They're also slower on-road, and you can see massively different speeds there. So the nineteen, the T thirty four seventy sixes will be your vanguard, and then like the T thirty four eighty five will be will follow up to deal with like the heavier armor. Um, so that's how you play with all of those tanks. And yeah, the main place you're going to push is probably in like the end of phase B, and uh, the beginning of the game. So at the beginning of the game, you're going to have a lot of armor because you've got seven hundred fifty points to deploy with. And you can put that all towards your tanks and, and lovely stuff. Um, but then in phase B, when you get the double Katyusha, you can use that to focus down targets that you've, you've been struggling to deal with. And then continue to push through with more cheap 76s, the T-34 76s or T-34 85s, whatever you need. Um, so that is the way that I would uh, play through this division. By the way, that's uh, been the battle group overview. If you have any questions about the division, make sure to... Uh, leave it in the comments and I will be continuing as I mentioned to cover all of these um, over time um, in order jumping between Axis and Allies. So we started with the second guards tank corps and next we'll be moving on to whatever's first on the list of the Axis and I'm going to be bringing you guys gameplay videos of all of these uh, battle groups as well so you can see how they work in practice. But that's it. Make sure to go check out my Twitch channel if you'd like to see live gameplay. Um, it's a lot of fun on the weekend, so make sure to come along. Um, but that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.